Well, it's episode 300, everyone. Welcome to Aussie Tech Heads Thursday, the 26th of July, episode 300. We'll call it a birthday episode um, for the hell of it. Why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's 300 episodes. Uh, yeah, six years. So uh, going into the seventh year, pretty much. And uh, yeah, it's a long time. A long time. Every week, sitting down here every week, doing a podcast, uh, doing what we love. And here's Will. Hey, Will. How you going? Evening. How are we? Yeah, not too bad. I was uh, just going through a few shows through the week, obviously, mm, and yes. uh, I, I've just, I've noted a couple of things down. You know, just when you guys started and all that, um, I put together a little a little uh, what would you call it a montage of audio, I suppose, or a little little snippet of over the last couple of years. And uh, we're going to yeah, pick well, up I, I pretty much started on you know like one nine out or something, didn't I? So I've, I've I'm, got a, I'm a newcomer as far as these things go. Yes, I have got you down as 198. You're exactly right. Exactly right. That's not a bad guess. <laughs> no. So we've got uh, Eric will be in late tonight if he, if he makes it at all. Um, he's, uh, he's, he's busy with work as usual at this time of year. But I've got here his first episode was 228. So, um, yeah, so you guys have been around for a while now. Will, 198, that's nearly, must be nearly two years. Well done. Yeah, be going there. That's, that's, you know, three hours an episode. 50 episodes a year. That's, you know. <laughs> that's right. That's 300 right. hours, pretty much. <laughs> so, yes, it's, uh, well, I was going to say we've come a long way, uh, but <laughs> since we started in uh, in September 2006, but uh, audio-wise, you wouldn't you wouldn't think so, would you? <laughs> audio Especially problems tonight, no. still plague us. But anyway, it's uh, it's going good tonight. So let's see how we okay. go. So Although the internet, the only thing that's changed is the internet's got faster. The internet has got faster. Mostly. <laughs> yes. Well, I remember when we first started, it was just audio only. Uh, wasn't even on Skype. Mark used to come around and we used to do it face-to-face. Uh, things just weren't happening. Uh, I think my cable speed was, what upload was about uh, 128k up, I think it was. It was, yeah, it was, like it was pretty bad. <laughs> it was pretty bad. But, uh, but anyway, we're all, um, we're all sorted now with two and a half meg up. So that's good. Show um, off. Yeah, well, you've got the same. How's yours going anyway? You'd have the same. Mine is horrible at the moment. It, uh, the last couple of weeks, I've been getting about uh, 600 up. 600, yeah, right. I actually had a problem through the week as well. I Actually, I jumped on to do The Den, an episode of The Den with Mark through the week. And wouldn't you know, as soon as we jumped on, <laughs> my internet actually just fell apart and couldn't connect to anything. It, it just went down. The whole thing went down. So, uh, so it's all the, all the government agencies logging on to listen to you. Possibly. That's what Mark said. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. So, uh, yeah, possibly. But, um, yeah, so, uh, but what happened was I rang Telstra because the whole thing had died. It was, there, was nothing, there was nothing going on. So, uh, and the fix, because, I, you know, I turned everything off, reset everything, blah, 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 and nothing seemed to work. So what had happened... Well, what the fix was, we actually had to take the, the lead, the cable lead out of the back of the modem, you know, the one you screw in, took, mm. took that out, put that back in, and then that came back up. Don't ask me how that works, but that's huh? what I did. <laughs> so go and try that, anyone. Maybe, uh, and look, that's been going pretty good, so maybe it sort of reset something else as well. Like, I don't know. But anyway. But isn't that the same as unplugging your modem? Well, or because it's cable, must be there's some sort of charge still going through it. I guess, well, yeah, there is constant power going to the cable, so yeah, I guess. Yeah, so give that a shot, Will. Give that a shot. Hmm. Now, um, usual intro. Where are my usual intros? I've got it in written down here somewhere. I've got to tell everyone <laughs> what's going on because people need to know. People need to know what they can do because we come yeah, in different, different varieties, different sizes, <laughs> different shapes. We're in different flavours for your convenience. That's right. And one of the flavours, <laughs> well, oh, and we must welcome the lounge, of course. Sorry, <laughs> a very remiss of me, lounge. Welcome to the lounge who come in every Thursday night just to watch us record live. Welcome and have some fun. Uh, also, you can join the lounge if you like, live.thesecrethub.com every Thursday night. Uh, the uh, Skype, you can Skype in and have a chat to us if you wish. At Skype, call handle is Aussie Tech Heads. Uh, you'll have to just obviously do it throughout the week or something just to make the contact so I can approve you to jump in. Uh, I don't know if it comes up automatically or not. I think I, I tried to set it like that, so maybe it does. Uh, you can do the podcast, obviously, on iTunes, where most of you guys are probably listening to us right now. The video, the pre-recorded video is live. No, it's not. It's video.aussietechheads.com. <laughs> 
Au and also the paper, paper.aussietechheads.com.au and will the radio. Aussietechheads.com.au. I think there's a couple of things up there. I, I put up last week's Aussie Tech Heads. So that should be... Yeah, uh, but, uh, it, we're not getting too carried away for the first few weeks because we want to make sure it's actually going to work. <laughs> that's right. So, yeah, so that's going good. And also, uh, every week, we um, also replay before the show. It's around about 7 o'clock. Depends on how long their episode goes for. But it's uh, techwebcast dot info with brad and the gang and they're approaching 200 episodes also so well done to you boys as well it's a great effort good to see and um anyone else who does have a podcast or a video cast whatever you want to vlog vlog cast whatever you want to call it you guys are out there you want us to, you want us to uh let's get you on before the show as well we'll we'll, we'll cue you up that if you want to start a podcast give me a ring or give me an email, a video cast, give us an email, or if you've already got one, let us know who you are. We can slot you into the radio and uh, let you play 24-7 as well with anything else. So we let's start let's start growing this thing, eh? Let's let's start making Aussie Aussie podcasts and stuff happen. All right. And just in case you are thinking about starting a uh, a podcast or, or any sort of website at all, uh, we can help you with that as well. We can. Good on you, Will. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know how, but we can. <laughs> nah, look, you just you want something done, and you got a good idea. You just give me an email, and I'll soon tell you what the go is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, look, if you've got a, if you got a if you want to host a web page, yeah, we also offer hosting dot dot com dot au. Uh, cheap plans at the moment. It's all been slashed. Prices have been slashed for the intro introductory period. So it's jump so on there. cheap, we're losing money. That's exactly right. That's actually not far <laughs> off the truth. <laughs> so jump on there and get some get some good hosting deals while they last. Also register your domain name. So hosting Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Well, we better get in with some uh, some news. Well, I was just going to quickly ask you before we, we get carried away with that. You had the opportunity to go to Cinex last night. I did. I For went those to those who don't know, Cinex is basically a. Uh, no. A geek fest, as all my friends call it. <laughs> yeah, it's probably um, uh, it's just for like a, the resellers and all that sort of stuff. It's uh, just the the vendors showcase their products: Microsoft, Epson, Brother, Eaton, uh, ARN, oh, just a whole heap of them. You know what it's like. But it's great because you get to see what's going on before it actually happens a lot of the time. Yeah, so that was good. It was good. Um, no, no, it was a bit smaller than last year, I think. Will. Um, a little bit it's because it was too early, so nobody was there. <laughs> yeah, you could be right. Could be right. Uh, okay, someone's saying Skype's not on. Someone's trying to ring. Skype's not on. Yes, it is. You might have the old Skype handle. It's uh, it is now Aussie Tech Heads with an S. So I'd say whoever that is, um, PA, you might have the old Skype handle because we changed it. We had to add the S onto it. Um, all right, now let's uh, let's uh, yeah. So Cynix was good. There's not much going on. Oh, and now I think Will's just jumped out. Great Thursdays. Sorry, our servers have encountered an error. Please try again. Fatal server response from the Hangout. Oh my goodness me. We'll get. We'll, we better try again, eh? See if we can get him back. <laughs> oh, you love it. You love it. Um, all right. So while we're doing that. Well, he's a riveting, riveting. So he's going to come back and just wait, 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 and we're going to edit this bit out. Yes, okay. Well, we finished talking about that about ten minutes ago because uh, the hangout went down. It's gone down for everyone apparently. So everyone in the <laughs> in the uh, in the lounge still is can't get on a hangout either. So anyway, let's move on onwards and upwards. We can do things without without Google. We've gone back to Skype. So, uh, whoopie doo! How uh, sound check? Will, how's that going? It's, uh, it's, 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 it's good. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's start some stories. Let's get this show on the road. For goodness' sakes. Um, oh, just a little quick one that I that I saw. Optus is to buy Eatability. Six million. Don't even know what Eatability is. You ever heard of it, Will? As far as I know, it's like a uh, Foursquare for restaurants. Yeah, something like that. I've never heard of it. Uh, strange, curious thing is that the, apparently the, um, the the acquisition is pending and subject to review by the Foreign Investment Review Board. What the hell has that got to do with that? Hey. Yeah, I know. Must be a foreign company then. Well, Optus is. You know, like Singtel. But, That's um, what I mean, so... But what? But I thought you could only, like, 
if you know with newspapers, you buy you can only, you can buy the so much only buy so much percentage of the whole market. But they're they're in telephones now. They're going into what a web page. I didn't think there was any. Yeah, going but see, I guess you have to figure out how many Australian restaurant directories there are. What is that? So who cares? But anyway, that's what's going on. That was just it's probably point. yellow pages. As Telstra's probably getting upset because there's another lack of use for the yellow pages. Mm. <laughs> Anyway, that's that's that. I didn't really care. Now, uh, there are probably more important stories for people is Mountain. I mean, Apple ships OS X Mountain Line that's already gone out through the download store. Mac OS X 10.8 has been released. Now it's a four gig download, and according to internet analytics company Net Applications, 84 uh, percent of the in-use Macs run either Line or Snow Leopard. So that's a pretty high percentage of uh, up-to-date machines out there higher than uh, Windows XP and versus Windows 7 machines. Um, and, yeah, so Apple has begun taking requests f- for a free copy of the Mountain Line from customers who have purchased a new Mac on or after June 11. So if you've purchased a new Mac on or after June 11, get down to your Apple Store and you'll be able to uh, get a voucher or code or whatever to get a free upgrade. Uh, so to, to obtain the code necessary, there is a form and there's a link on the web page for you to fill a form out. Now, look, um, a, yep. I was going to say, there's a couple of things with it, though. Um, some of the uh, the people in the know are saying, don't upgrade yet. There's a compatibility uh, program you can run because apparently there is quite a few business productivity programs that don't actually work with it at the moment. Right. Um, right. So if you're using it, if um, certain video editing programs, photo editing programs, audio editing programs... Um, accounting software, uh, there is, and there's there's a fair amount of those that don't work at the moment. But um, yeah, but they'll, they'll they'll all be updated probably. They will post haste. It's just imagine. one of those things you know. You just have to be a little bit wary of it. Mm. Now um, the, up, the update apparently takes from around about averaging thirteen to fifty seven minutes, depending on what Mac you're putting it on. Now these t- these times are average from a number of machines that uh, have had no or very little use. So they're pretty, you know, vanilla machines mm. uh, from from the store. So no internet downloads and you know the accumulated crap that you normally would get over periods of time. Um, so the Mountain Line update costs nineteen dollars ninety nine, and can be installed as we said on most Macs. The new Retina MacBook Pro was the best and fastest to update. Uh, when the new MacBook Air models, the, the new MacBook Air was close behind. The Retina MacBook Pro, the 15 inch notebook with a high resolution screen that Apple unveiled last month, completed the mountain line upgrade in just 13 minutes, while the 11 inch and 13 inch MacBook Air needed 17 minutes. So if you've got an older machine with a, a non SSD, I'd say it's going to take a little bit longer. But anyway. And also, too, you can go to. Uh uh, roaringapps.com R-O-A-R-I-N-G-A-P-P-S dot com thanks to Frosty in the chat room and that's got the list of compatibility apps that are compatible and aren't compatible um, so that will take some of the guesswork out for you oh yeah good stuff good stuff uh, look there is a list also in the show notes the show notes obviously are always at aussietechx.com.au but there also is a list of the benefits to upgrade to the new the new version uh, most of the benefits um I don't know. It, it seems to be just all synchronization for mine. For me, the biggest benefit is just the synchronization between all the de- the i devices as well. You know, you, you do a document on the the Mac. It's all then it's in the on the iPad. It's on your iPhone. It all lives in the cloud. So, see so even programs you do as regularly. I was just quickly flicking through them. Uh, Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop Elements, which is quite a common program, doesn't work correctly. So, mm. so yeah, yeah, but they'll also two. News has just got out that there's a new uh, Trojan that automatically installs itself on OS X um, on Mountain Line. And yeah, Leopard. okay. Yeah, right. It, um, it uh, doesn't require a password. It slides in the back door. Um, and it basically it's a Trojan and then it silently dials back to the server every so often. And, uh, to what? Apple server? Or no, what? to the Trojan server. So how did and, this get into um, the Apple update? Uh, the, well, this article doesn't go into depth on how you can get it. <laughs> it does, however, mention that you can pay for uh, oh, one of the virus scanners they're, they're mentioning. 
I'm okay. sure there are free virus scanners for Mac, the same as there are for Windows. And yes, you do need a virus scanner. You do need to have one installed because you can catch viruses. Yeah. And particularly now that they're becoming more commonplace, the main reason Macs weren't really susceptible is because um, there really wasn't the population out there and that wasn't worth the coders writing viruses for it. But now that it's becoming more and more popular, it's starting to become more of a target. So you do need to have a virus scanner. Have a virus scanner. Well, I don't have one on mine. Mine, go, mine goes back pretty good. Uh, but you know, that doesn't mean Maybe anything. you don't use it as a regular everyday system, though. No, no, probably not. It only gets well. The, well, no, not really. No, <laughs> it, it does get more use at the moment um, because it actually it's uh, the the window to the the hosting to the hosting service in Sydney. But um, yeah, but at the, but that's pretty much all. I'm not browsing around or doing anything yeah, like that. That's right. Yeah, uh, Google Maps add New South Wales public transportation directions. So that's pretty handy. Google Maps will calculate the best non-driving route to get from point A to point B, whether by train, bus, ferry, light, rail or monorail. I thought they were taking that down. Uh, directions include the best walking route, monorail. Why would, just, why would that be ever be the <laughs> best? All three stations of it because that's really hard to figure out. <laughs> yeah. Directions include the best walking route to each stop. Public transportation directions can also be accessed through the Google Maps mobile app, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the addition arrives two weeks after Google added cycling directions. Oh, I'm glad they did that. Uh, you know why they've had to do that? Because people are using Google Maps on their smartphone. They're walking down the footpath and all of a sudden it says cross seven lanes of traffic to get to the other side of the road. People do and they get run over. Mm. And that's why Google basically, they've done it in the States a while back. They're basically forced now. I mean, they probably would have done it anyway, but they pretty much have to now. It's because people are following the GPS literally. Uh, knobs. Anyway, local and tourists alike <laughs> using New South Wales' <laughs> hundreds of train, ferry and bus lines to the tune of over 500 million times a year. So Google wrote on their, on their blog. Now, I think like the bicycle routes have probably been added because didn't Sydney, mm. haven't they, didn't the mayor introduce some sort of ride-to-work scheme or ride bicycle hire well, for free? Well, it's scheme? the same up in Melbourne. They've had them for quite a year, actually. The same as they have in Brisbane now. Um, bicycle, dedicated bicycle lanes, um, which duck weave and sidestep through little you know laneways and stuff so if you didn't actually know where you're going it was very easy to become lost so mm. that's part of the reason they've, they've introduced that mm. all right uh, now we've got another one moving quick through them because uh thing time just flies doesn't it will so because we broke the internet tonight yeah that's right so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna move quick before the uh before the skype fails <laughs> Oh, we shouldn't say that. Microsoft, <laughs> they're good. They're That's good. That's it. Skype I'm going to have good. to come and visit, aren't I? <laughs> Australian government websites taken offline by Anonymous. Oh, they've struck again. Uh, Anonymous have claimed credit for taking down 10 Queensland government websites, including sunshinecoast.queensland.gov.au, regions.queensland.gov.au. They're all .gov.au's. Like, that's, I don't know, that'd be pretty hard to jam into uh, the .gov.au. That'll so, be a central server. That'll be why. Yeah, but still. But uh, uh, so they, um, yeah, jammed the uh, websites earlier in the week. Now I've got, I did have a... Yeah, but Anonymous also uh, breached AAPT and stole 40 gig of customer data from them as well. That's right. They did too. So uh, look, I Anonymous are going off this week. <laughs> they are. They're not happy, are they? They're, apparently <laughs> what, what started this is one of the proposals includes tailored data retention periods for up to two years. So this is what they're upset about, that the uh, especially the Queensland government is re, 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 uh, going to legislate to, to retain, the ISPs to retain your web history data, everything you do on the internet for up to two years. And uh, look, initially I don't suppose I've got an issue with it, but I mean... I suppose then, on the other hand, why? Um, yeah, I, I, I yeah, but it's, it's anonymized. An anon the <laughs> oh. that word, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, an anonymized. But um, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Why? Why bother keeping it if it's anonymized? Same yeah. reason Google keeps everything. No, I don't. It's think all so. statistical data. The qu the government's not into um, statistics, advertising, yeah. <laughs> uh, internet advertising, and internet trends. They're into well, they're supposed to be in the government in the joint. But yeah, I don't look. I don't see why. Like, I don't probably have an issue really. But 
I, why? why? I would have to imagine that they've probably been doing it anyway and they finally figured it's about time they should tell people. Look, if to be I, honest, if they make that sort of announcement, it means they've already got the infrastructure in place and they've already tested it. So, If I, if I was asked if I wanted it or not, I'd say no. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, but you won't be asked. You'll be told oh, that no. you want it because it's the best thing for you. But I'm just, I'm just <laughs> conveying where I'm sitting. Have it, damn it. So anyway, as Will said, uh, AAPT have confirmed a security breach of business customer data stolen from servers stored at Melbourne IT uh, by hackers associated with Anonymous. The hackers yesterday announced they had stolen 40 gig of data from one of the, from Melbourne IT in protest against the local laws again. So every, they're not happy about these these retention data retention laws. The ISP said the servers storing the files had not been connected to the AAPT for more than a year, which makes you wonder why the hell do they keep all this crap? Oh, here we go. Yeah. The uh, details supposedly contained for the government um, planning documents uh, is everything from, uh, where is it, family, friends, enemies, sexual history. What? <laughs> where you've worked. <laughs> yeah, see, that's not anonymized. <laughs> that's rubbish. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, look, they shouldn't do it. So, uh, but it makes you think, like, do you think the the reason that Anonymous is there, like, they're obviously smart little cookies, aren't they, that can get in oh, and, absolutely. and bring all this They're, they're basically down. saying, hey, look, you want to store data, fine. Make mm. it secure because this isn't secure. Look. This is what we can do to it. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But also I think it's a bit of, you know, like the internet was built, uh, it wasn't owned by anyone. And so no. with all the governments and that are trying to, Store this and store that, and Google storing this and but, storing that. They're trying well, to own it. That's you can store it. That storing is one thing, but trying to restrict access to it and trying to claim that you have rights over it. The reason the internet was developed was as a non centralized information system. And no, it wasn't developed for porn. That didn't happen till six months after it's turned on. Hmm. Um, but <laughs> it was basically designed to not be secure in, in the respect that we think about it. Um, it's incredibly staggered. You know, it's it's designed to be robust. It's designed to not go down. It's not designed to be, you know, locked up and, and yeah. s turned into a secure facility. It mm. it won't work like that. The, the internet can't handle that sort of transition. So if it's going to go that way... Effectively, the internet has to be scrapped and rebuilt, really, into a completely different system because it just won't work. Yeah, I think I think the government, for whatever reason, they just they just get a bit 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 paranoid about. I mean, could you imagine stuff. searching? Say they do store it and it's semi-anonymized, but you know what to search for, so you can access some of your own records. Could you imagine searching for your name and having two years worth of data mm. to? you know, in terms of information and searchability, mm. how much bandwidth and how much data that would consume. As PA said in the chat room, the amount of storage space you would need, even if you're just storing raw text, is yeah, absolutely ludicrous. Mm. So maybe the, maybe the story is not entirely correct, what the, what the legislation is supposed to do. But uh, I'm sure more and more will come out of it as time goes on. As, as time goes no on. No doubt. But uh, but uh, on the on the other hand, and and on a higher good note, Australia cuts down on spam. We're not as we're not pumping out as much spam anymore. Well, that's good because we just top the scales for piracy. So oh, good. <laughs> okay. We put our talents. You know, it all balances else. out. <laughs> Australia accounted for point two point uh, two six percent of global spam in the second quarter. So that's not very much, and uh, making it the fifty second in the world. The report revealed this is a, an improvement over September 2010 when Australia accounted for 1% of all spam. Uh, India produced the most spam of any country with 11.4%. I thought it was like those Bangladeshi princes or whatever they are. <laughs> no, who knows? But yeah, so uh, India's got 11.4% uh, of the spam, pumps out 11.4%, uh, despite only being uh, accounting for 5.3% of the world's internet mm. population. But apparently in the areas that do have technology, I was speaking to a friend who went over there and he said the connectivity you have in that place is amazing. Everything from, you know, they've got free Wi-Fi hotspots all over the place and, you know, it's fully, you know, it's, it's an incredibly connected society. Mm, yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, so, well, India, yeah, it's, it's up and coming, isn't it? So the USA, once the top spam producer, is now the second, in second place. You know why it's our spam count so low? It's because our internet's so damn expensive, nobody can afford to do it. Probably, but, <laughs> but we've got pretty uh, tight controls, haven't we? Like, pretty big fines. I'm not sure if the other... India probably yeah. doesn't have anything. I mean, Indian... I mean, the other countries do if they spam us, but... They're all anonymised. You're never going to find out who it is. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but we're not. And yeah. I mean, how many of those Indian servers are spoofed? I mean, they might say, you know, there's 16% or whatever it is coming from India, but that's just where the IP address is coming from. That doesn't mean they're not coming from Taiwan being spoofed through a fake IP through India. Yeah, you know. true. Yeah, who knows what goes on. I just don't like it. I'm glad that uh, my <laughs> Gmail pumped it all out to the spam box. I hardly get any. Oh, it's, it it's, does. I have to admit, that's one thing Gmail does really well, mm, and it very rarely gives fake, um, incorrect spam either. Yeah. Look, sometimes there, I have to get you go. Occasionally, I will go through the spam just to mm. see, you know, what what's going on. And yeah, you do have to pull a couple out, but they're not really important ones. Um, just ones probably emails that you know cut, you're one of say a thousand recipients or something. They've probably decided that's spam. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so in the air now, Qantas customers will be able to access flight entertainment on iPads on the B767 flight. Flights. Uh, Qantas will partner with Panasonic to use its EXW solution for Q streaming, which will provide on-demand in-flight entertainment content in business class and economy. What happened to first class? Is it still first class or is it just business class? Yeah, but first class has probably had it for five years. Yeah, probably. <laughs> And the good news is the service will be free. The first B767 aircraft will be fitted with the iPads in the fourth quarter of this year and will primarily operate on the East Coast and Perth routes. Now, I've got uh, somewhere a story I, I, I mentioned. I remember talking about it months ago. Um, they were beta testing the iPads. And because you can't take certain icons off the desktop and stuff, what they did was they just created a folder down the bottom that said do not open <laughs> right and it's got all the the normal folders like your system settings and everything like that you can't normally take off <laughs> so i'll be curious open. to see how they've got around that by now yeah do not open that at work <laughs> wouldn't it <laughs> well why didn't they just put it down in the corner of the screen and just put a sticker on the screen <laughs> <laughs> or put a paint it black <laughs> Uh, yeah, just put a put a sticker over the bottom of the screen, half an inch wide. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So the only two seats in a plane that I don't want to have the iPads is obviously up in the cockpit. Um, uh, I, I well, you know what happens when they do that. Remember that story from a few months ago? No, what happened? The uh, the pilots were using the iPad app, uh, the weather iPad app, to get instant updates on the weather because they couldn't get it from the the tower. And they ended up uh, crash landing because they overshot the runway because they were too busy trying to use the iPad. Great. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, so we don't want them up there. Now, uh, iOS 6 ditches passwords for free app downloads. Apple will modify the security rules for app downloads in iOS 6, Requi uh, ditching the requirement to enter passwords for free app downloads and updates. That's... Uh, I don't know if I 100% agree with that. Hmm. Probably 70% agree with it. Uh, paid uh, yeah. I mean, it's been working for Android for a few years, so I guess. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Um, I just know that, like, well, I, I lend my iPad to the kids and stuff, and, you know, I'd rather it not be filled up with rubbish. They, they should be, let you toggle on or off if, mm. you, if you want that. They should make it an option. Uh, the paid applications still require a password. The new feature was revealed as part of IO, Apple's iOS 6 Beta 3, released to Apple developers last week. iOS 6 is expected to launch later this year around the same time as the new iPhone. Whoa. I think probably what they should do, given that it's loosely based on Linux anyway, is just create a main account and a guest account. So if you do lend it to somebody, you can turn on or off all the features because you can do that on Android. You can, do, you can use a guest um, program or a guest app that turns it in the device into basically it locks it down. So, yeah, yeah, I think, um, I think something like that would be perfect because, it, as you say, it's a device that anybody can pick up and use. You can give it to your kids, you can give it to your grandma, mm. or whatever. So, 
you know, you don't want your grandma clicking on on Skyfire only to find out that the last page you're looking at was, you know, <laughs> yeah, porn tube. Yeah, yeah. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think something like that would probably. I can see them implementing something like that, whether or not they do. But to me, it feels like it's something they should. Mm. Mm. Now, I don't know if you received SMSs through the week, Will, but uh, apparently hundreds of Australians received SMS death threats. I heard about this. I mean, it made the news, so. Yeah, well, it's a death threat. Hundreds of people got it. Someone's found out a way of sending uh, cheap or free SMSs because otherwise... Why would you do it? Hundreds of Australians have received death threats by, uh, by SMS from a scammer who threatened to kill the recipients unless they paid a $5,000 ransom. So there you go. The death threat which came through on the SMS read, someone paid me to kill you. Get spared 48 hours to pay five grand. If you inform the police or anybody, death is promised. Email me now. Killerking247 at yahoo.com. There you go. If you get one of those, just delete it. Yeah, it's pretty much. Um, rubbish. I really don't think it would have taken that long for the feds to be on top of that email address. <laughs> oh, do you reckon it wouldn't even be real? Uh, well, even if it was, I mean, the m- traffic they're going to be monitoring. Mm. Uh, now, Vodafone is finally going to kill off three in next month. Vodafone Hutchinson is on track to migrate remaining three mobile uh, customers across. They've only got four customers left. <laughs> and you're not one of them. No. <laughs> Good. Good. Uh, what else? Windows Phone 8 release date revealed. Windows Phone 8 smartphones could be in, in uh, hot little hands in November. There you go. According uh, Windows 8 and Windows Phone 8 launch Oxo- October 26th. So, look, I had a look at the Windows 8 on a touchpad last night. It was on a, I forget what it was, an Acer or something. Uh, the pad was he- quite heavy. I don't know if I'd like to use that particular one. But, yeah, look, the Windows 8 seemed to work okay on it. I didn't mind it. That was okay. I'd probably like to get one when it came out. Yeah, I heard a couple of people about that. Apparently, um, they were relatively impressed with it, given that, you know... Uh, Previous Windows incarnations have been mm. more or less unusable. And look, and look, I've played a bit more with the the Windows 8 on my laptop here because like one of the main things that strikes you straight away is there's no start button. So if you want to go to the control panel, for instance, say you want to create a user account, how? There's no there's no you know start button uh, control panel user accounts. There's control none of that. shift escape. I mean. Well, the good thing is it's just pretty much like a Mac actually. Like if you don't know where anything is and how to navigate to it, well, you just search for it. You just start typing in, say, mm. user account, and it'll come up on the screen, and you click on it. And you, I you have to admit, I've actually push. found myself doing that in normal Windows quite often. Um, yeah, yeah, I do it for programs. Because as soon as you hit the start button, it pops up. So That's right. I yeah. guess if you're sort of doing that anyway, it's not, not too bad. Mm. That's the only thing that uh, I could probably pick on at the moment. Uh, look... Why they took it away, I've got no idea. I didn't think it would matter if they left it there or not. It's just one of those things. But it, it's gone, so we've got to get used to it. And, look, everyone cl- cried about the the uh, ribbon in Office, the Office ribbon when it came out. We've all settled down. We've all got over it. So we'll be right. Mm. <laughs> we'll, we'll live on. We won't die. That's it. Uh, and while well, speaking of Microsoft, they've written down their first Microsoft Post first ever loss. Nah. Really? I missed that one. A massive write-down in the value of a quantitative advertising network and slowing sales of PCs running Windows has contributed to Microsoft reporting its first ever loss in its 26-year history on the stock exchange. Wow. Yeah, so that's uh, pretty big. And yet uh, Korea Electronics is currently the world's top-selling smart- smartphone maker and just sold 10 million units of the newest Galaxy S3 since it launched two months ago. And they just uh, recorded an operating profit this month of five point seven billion. Wow, that's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> Did I read somewhere that Apple Apple's profit was down a bit this quarter? To yeah, something. well, they say here that the Samsung shipped forty four and a half million smartphones this in the first quarter, and Apple only shipped thirty five million. So Samsung shipped nine million more devices than Apple. 
Yeah, well, they were saying that Apple's profit was disappointing because it was down to six point six million or billion or something. So yeah, <laughs> very disappointing. Yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's <laughs> and, horribly disappointing. And uh, Microsoft lost uh, four hundred ninety-two million US dollars during the June quarter. So that's, that's only half a billion. That's all right. They got heaps, as opposed to a profit of pop of five point eight seven billion a year ago. Well, that's a big turnaround. So that's, a year ago, yeah. Well, that's six billion loss, isn't it? A year ago, they made a profit five point eight billion, well, and they lose today half a mil, so they've lost yeah. half a bill. They've lost five, well, you know, a bit over five billion dollars in twelve months. Yeah, Microsoft shares rose, although two point one four percent to thirty one dollars thirty two. That's just they're still down on what they used to be, though. But remember, oh yeah, well they used to be a hundred and something. Oh, easy, yeah, yeah and the, and the Apple's. What three hundred and something aren't they, or four hundred and something? Apple's gone crazy. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So anyway, Microsoft. <laughs> the here the uh, uh, the international uh, international affair trading court or some thing. I can't remember. I've been trying to find the story for the last ten minutes and I can't. But basically, they've told Apple to pull their head in, stop suing everyone because they're getting annoyed, yeah. and they're going to. Uh, well, who is it? <laughs> they're basically going to. Um, um, yeah, start, you know, charging Apple for all these yes, yes, don't lawsuits blame. they're creating. So who was this? Who was this that was doing it? I, I can't remember. I'm trying to find the story. It, it was something like the international, uh, something rather, something like Supreme Court or something. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, so um, they should um, because that's just, it's, there's, there's lawsuits every single day of the week. They've got so much money, they can just, just do this sort of thing. Yeah, and basically the this international body, governing body, said, look, stop it. <laughs> yes, I don't blame them. We've had enough. We're sick of it. Go away. <laughs> now, here's another one. Out of the out of the UK here, scenes of uh, violence and destruction were inappropriate for young children, and this has caused the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 advertisements during daytime TV get banned. So, oh, really? Yeah, so I think that's probably a fair call. Um, Why kids at home during the day anyway? They should be at school. <laughs> they include buildings <laughs> exploding and catching fire, armed men firing at a lorry until it crashes, and a helicopter firing rockets. Two viewers complained. That's an outrage <laughs> that the advert <laughs> should not be on during the day. So they got their way. Two viewers. No, it's it's probably a fair thing. Oh, yeah, but it's probably a fair thing. But, geez, two. Jeez. One of them said that they're maybe two percent of viewers, but not two viewers. <laughs> it said two. <laughs> I'll show you. Where's my link? That is there. I'll come for me. Yeah, yeah, no, but I'm saying, you know, yeah, if two percent of viewers complained, maybe, but not two viewers. Well, it's, you not, know. it's not like the BBC to make a mistake, is it? <laughs> Uh, no, is it BBC One or BBC Two or BBC Three or BBC <laughs> Four or whatever they're up to now? But anyway, one of them said that their children aged between two and four were frightened. Um, <laughs> the action in the advert set in New York, London and Paris is accompanied by a voiceover saying, The world as you knew it is gone. How far will you go to bring it back? Do they consider like, I don't know, taking their kid outside and walking them down the street? No, nah, <laughs> wasn't a consideration. It was raining. As usual. Uh, the game broke records on its launch in November with more than 6.5 million copies sold in the UK and in the US in its first 24 hours of release. So there you go. And, um, all right, satellite turns 50. It is 50 years since the first public satellite. Television images were beamed across the Atlantic from the United States to Britain and mainland Europe. 50 years. Audio snippet is available on the webpage there that's uh, in the show notes. For, um, but it is of an audio snippet of Ian Logie Baird, grandson of John Logie Baird, who apparently is the curator of a broadcast the bro of broadcast culture at the National Media Museum in the UK. And, uh, yeah, 50 years since the first satellite. I remember in the 70s, you know, you'd be th 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 all the shows would be doing their satellite uh, hookups or whatever, and they're going quick, quick, quick. We've got it at like eight o'clock. We've only got it for five minutes. We've got to get it all sorted, and then the satellite would drop out. Like they must have been a lot of strict five-minute blocks of time or whatever time they could buy, and it was very expensive. Not like today. Not like the internet of today. Well, I remember when Hey Hey It's Saturday had their final show. It was supposed to be a three-hour show, and they ran into like four hours or whatever it was. 
Um, apparently, they cost, what was it, Channel 9 back then? Um, something like $5 million in satellite time. Yeah, right. <laughs> because wow. it ran in like an extra hour. Oh, wow. Jeez. Oh, um, yeah, so all right. So now we're going we're gonna to have Garth. We've, we've pulled Garth out from the, from the hard drive and we found him. And uh, let's have a look. Cause, uh, Garth is here. He comes along every now and then and gives us an iOS review. Now, if we can uh, just capture this properly. I don't know why that's gone over the top of it. Hang on a second. I'll get it ready here. All right. <laughs> we'll go and see what Garth's up to. This doesn't look... Oh, yeah. Three minutes. I thought I didn't see the three. All right. <laughs> okay, Garth, what do, you, what do you got for us this week? G'day. Back again with Garth. And, Garth, what do you got for us tonight? All right. Tonight I've got a way of listening to um, articles. So you might be using um, another app we went through before, Feed Reader, uh, Feedler, which is one of the RSS feed readers. Yep. And so that's a great way you can, you know, go through and you can add things to your read it later or what, they've, what now that they call Pocket. Um so it's one of these readability type of things where it strips all the ads and so forth and saves it for reading later with you know and you can sync it through your browser or you know yep have you used read have you used read later or pocket or no. no no okay so it's a way of favoriting things that I you want to come back and read later i don't have a commute you don't have a commute you no. don't no <laughs> okay so so you'll be listening reading through all the rss feeds Favoriting things with the read it later or pocket service. She's all right. Then I open up um, Lisco and I'll actually just link in with that pocket account and all of the stuff that I've saved for, lead, for reading later, it'll turn to speech. So it'll just play it through the, you know, it'll just read it all out. So any of the articles that I've liked the look of as I've been going through the feeds and haven't had a chance to read at the time, mm. I've added it to the queue basically. Nice. So then you open up Lisco, which is the app we're looking at here, L-I-S-G-O. Open up that, tell it to start reading, and um, it just plays out plays out all the articles for you. Yeah, so um, they, now this isn't a free app. Uh, no. This is two ninety nine. but hey, yeah, look, two ninety nine. dollars not cheap. It's, uh, what is, not cheap. It's still cheap. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's wrong. I say, well, you know, most of the apps, you know, yeah. for, the, for the amount of work that goes into them, the amount that's of right. enjoyment or, or productivity gains or whatever that you might get from them, like $2.99, it's... It's, it's not even a cup of coffee. No, that's you know, right. Like this, is, this is the good thing about the apps. Now, this is compatible with the iPhone, iPod Touch, uh, requires iOS 4 or later. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so you use this a lot, Garth. You're a fan? I use it a bit, yeah, because basically what it means, um, I think it would be really good for other people who are, like, driving. Yep. And you want to keep up with um, various news articles or whatever it is. Right. Um I don't know, if you're time poor and you still want to keep up with this sort of stuff, this can be a really handy way. In the same way that Audible is a great way of listening to your audio books um, yep. to get a bit of reading done, this is a great way to get through some of your blogs. Now, just reading some of the uh, advantages or features of this, it's got here, switch between reading and listening. So um, you can switch from reading to listening anytime with Lisco. So just double tap at the place where you'd like to start listening and Lisco will speak out loud from the part you selected. Mm -hmm. Do you prefer reading instead of listening when you sit down? When Lisco is reading an article for you, the words will scroll along with the audio. Yeah. So you can get back to reading easily. That's right. Yeah, so that's, that sounds good. Start playing at any position. Double tap to jump anywhere in the article. Auto scrolling works offline, works in the background, supports remote control, reorder your reading list easily, view the original web page, and adaptable voice speed. Oh, Garth, you'd love that. You like the adaptable voice speeds. <laughs> <laughs> listen Absolutely. To, listen to stuff in half the time. Yeah. All right, that's a good one. Let's go. Good stuff. And, and a little app. Yeah, so if you uh, want to, you can also watch all of Garth's uh, reviews in there. Uh, individuality if you go to the aussietechheads.com.au webpage and you will see the uh the, the just the just the video so you don't just have to draw through this. the whole aussie yeah. tech head show all right thanks garth we'll see you again soon no no nine eyes to you too garth i hope you have a nice night and uh garth is uh coming in quite regularly doing ios reviews now that reminds me as i was watching and listening to that one there i downloaded an ios app through the week it cost me thirty dollars a thirty wow. oh no a thirty dollar app you say but hey, it is a good one. It's, it's Angry Birds. No, it's not. It's, uh, <laughs> Angry Birds box set. <laughs> That's right. Hang on. I, I, I think it's called. I'll tell you what it's called. Um, you don't even know what it's called, do you? Oh, I could have a guess. But I just want to get it right. It's called. It's called Quick Sale, and it's a, it's an invoicing app. 
and it, so you can actually it's a, a, you can use it for inventory. Uh, look, I might do a review on it in a, in, a, in a week to come, but I'll quickly tell you about it now because it's, uh, you know, I, I look for a while to get an invoicing app because I know you can get stuff uh, like on the internet where you subscribe for 30 bucks a month. Um, and the name of that one that, that is well known escapes me at the moment. Uh, the, the one that Amber Mack and Leo go crazy about, um, I can't remember the name of it, but it, but it was a subscription based one. And, uh, yeah, so I didn't want that because it was twenty five bucks or twenty nine dollars a month, you know. So I just I thought, well, why can't we get something similar just to buy outright? So anyway, this thing looks like it does everything that I need it to do. Uh, it you, you can CSV inventory into it. Uh, you can export CSV, all this sort of stuff. You can email the invoice. You can even include a PayPal button on the invoice. So it's all good. It's all good. And then to print it out, if you've got a might an airport or something, you can print it out from your iPad. But I just send the invoice to my email. I just jump on and print the PDF out from my Gmail. So it, it all works good. That's if I have to, uh, if I have to do that. Um, yeah, cool. That's, that's my little app. But I'll, I might do a review and, and do, some, uh, do some screenshots and stuff. But I'll tell you what, uh, quite funnily enough, is uh, that YouTube, I'll tell you. What I'd like to see, because I was just telling Will before the show, uh, I'll, I'll be getting these every just about every episode that we put up on YouTube. I get the uh, get the the email, you know, you've you've infringed copyright, blah blah blah. And uh, look, uh, and of late, like I, I don't, I'm not playing, I'm not doing, I'm not, I don't think I'm infringing at all. Uh, I, I'm using everything under the you know under a fair use policy. We're doing a review, we're new show review show, uh, but that doesn't seem to stop these emails coming through, which is a pain in the bum just to respond to, you know. And if you, if you get too many of them, well, then they can, you know, cancel your account, your YouTube account, and go crazy, and, you know, like, and I know I know what getting cancelled is all about, because I was cancelled from the AdSense program. But, um, yeah, so anyway, look, I'd like to see YouTube move to some sort of, uh, some sort of system where you're actually, you're actually identified and screened, and therefore your account has just left the hell alone. Like, mm-hmm. um... You know, like, like, you know, when I'd signed up for PayPal, I think I was t- telling you last week, I had to send him a birth certificate, the business name, registration, passport, you know, copies of all this, you know, for like uh, to um, to appease the money laundering laws that Australia has. But why, why can't we do something and just verify who we are to YouTube and what we do and and then s- and say legally the onus is put back onto us uh, as the as the publisher if something happens if if we do upload content that is that side of the the fair use policy or is copyrighted by someone else i think that's fair i i just think it's a lot of work and as you said will it's all automated bots going through your videos anyway mhm because and part of the problem is too they use the um they use the subtitling like closed captioning now if you've ever watched anything on youtube with closed captions <laughs> You will know how incredibly pathetic it is. Given yeah. that Google Voice is one of the largest voice services in the world, their voice recognition when it comes to Australian accents is incredibly horrible. Yeah, you think it'd have learnt <laughs> by now, but uh, yeah, but that's just how it works, I suppose. Have you ever watched a, a Google a, a YouTube in three D? Does that work? Yeah, and it works. Yep. So you put the little cellophane glasses on. There's a couple of different ways of doing it. You can watch it in stereoscopic, which is to use the red and the blue um, cellophane, or the green and the red. Um, and Or there's uh, the one where it offsets the two pictures. Just There's two pictures side by side, and you sort of watch them a little bit cross-eyed. Um, or if you've got the hardware glasses, obviously you can use that. But, yeah, it does work. Obviously, you've got to Do you record find- the video in 3D. Because I, I was up at Dreamworld. Uh, the other day or last week, and they've got the you know they what the old IMAX theater there, so like that mm-hmm. big huge screen, and they had the a Robin Hood cartoon, three D Robin Hood cartoon. And it was mm. the cellophane glasses. Do you find that at the initially at the start that your eyes are straining a bit, like you get a bit 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 of a strain because you must not be with going the cellophane. Off? I have trouble with the uh, the polarized ones where you get the left. The left eye is horizontally polarized, and the right eye is vertically polarized. And the it, the image is played back at sixty frames a second, so thirty left and thirty right. Mm. But because they're played one frame apart, um, I actually found I had eye strain with that. Like when I was watching Avatar in three D. Yeah, right. Um, but I overcame that because what I would do is when you're watching a scene where they're inside, for example, and there's no depth of field. 
you don't need the glasses on because there's no 3D depth there anyway. Mm. So when I was watching those scenes, I took the glasses off and watched it. And then when they went outside where there was much more depth of field, I put the glasses back on and, uh, yeah. and yeah, so it sort of alleviated my eye strain. Now, was it you that was t- talking to me the other day that uh, about uh, Leo? Like, we all know who Leo is without going into who he is. That he can't watch 3D movies. He's got some yeah, problem. Yeah, he's one of, I think it's 12, 12% of the population. It's actually quite a high number who don't have... They have two eyes, obviously, so you still have stereo <laughs> vision, so you still have your full, um, you know, field of view, but you don't have the depth perception yeah. properly. Yeah. You, you have it, like, if you close one eye and try and reach for something, your depth perception's out of whack. It's not that bad. It still works. But when they watch 3D things, their brain doesn't process it to yeah. the extent, so... Yeah. That's insane. So he can't just go out and he can't enjoy his uh, his little three D movie. Yeah, that's, pretty much. Mm, that's no, that's, don't care. <laughs> I can. <laughs> yeah, that's no good. That's no good. All right. Um. All right. So I think we're. He does he have a bung eye? <laughs> I think he might have. <laughs> I was just uh, bring. Uh, you're talking earlier before we went to Garth about uh, fifty years. Um. You know how technology has changed basically in fifty years. I'll, I've got a an old four drive. It's called an old G sixty Patrol. It's actually nearly sixty year old. And fifty years ago, it was the first vehicle to cross the Simpson Desert. What your car? Uh, not mine specifically, but the oh, G sixty Patrol. Yeah, right. right. Um, and they just this week they've got back from doing a fifty year anniversary crossing. Um, Nice. Using the old G60 Patrol, and they had a a uh, Prado and something else tag along, and both those broke down. Right. And the old G, the old 55 year old G60 Patrol Just plotted to... along, made it from one end of Australia to the other. Wow! Kept on keeping on. <laughs> kept on keeping you know, on. So it just goes to show you, you know, they <clears throat> they went with a you know, a five uh, well like a three year old yeah. vehicle. Yeah. And, yeah, the 50-year-old vehicle made it. No worries. Nice. So nice it just goes to show you that, um, yeah. you know, technology they, hasn't necessarily changed for the better. Well, they, they, in the old days, well, they made things to last, didn't they? Like these days, like, oh, you just, like, you, silly things and simple things. I, su- well, I suppose with technology, nothing simple. But, like, look, I, I got a computer in through the week. I think I was talking about it last week, so last week, whenever it was, um, that you kept turning itself off. And so, so I eventually diagnosed that it was the motherboard. So I wanted to replace the motherboard, but you, you can't find the, the the specific motherboard that takes these the chips anymore because I the chip that was in it was a what was a LGA eleven fifty six style, mm-hmm. and all the motherboards these days are eleven fifty five because they're they're newer. They've moved on, and like, I know I could have because I'm pretty sure it wasn't the chip, and I'm pretty sure it was the, the uh, motherboard. So, but. I don't look. I don't buy motherboards off eBay and all this sort of stuff. So, so yeah. So the guy had to buy a, whole, a CPU and a and a motherboard. But I thought, just what a waste. But see, that's a, a good waste. thing about AMD. In some respects, they keep a lot of backwards compatibility. Like the new AM3 socket will actually fit chips that are, you know, eight or nine year old still. So, mm. so I tell you, I got onto the eBay, and as part of my arsenal now, <laughs> it's just no. I bought. <laughs> I have. It hasn't been opened yet either, because I only got it today. But it's a it's a postcard. There you go. A postcard. You stick that into the motherboard. I don't know. Oh if yeah. You can. Yep. It's got a digital readout. Oh, there. That's just, is that the uh, the PCIe one? There's a. It's a no. Uh, but it's also PCI. it's also for laptops. It's got a USB cable as well. Oh, cool. So, yeah. So it does laptops as well through the USB. But look, I'll just um. I'll show you. I'll get it out. I wonder how that works. Hmm. Oh, who knows as long as it works. <laughs> there you go. It's got a little readout there. You plug it into the motherboard there. I guess yeah. gone are the days of uh, listening for the beeps. <laughs> well, this is when you don't get any beeps. This is when, <laughs> like, the problems I had. I, I tried everything on that machine. I even replaced the CMOS battery, which I ordered a couple from India as well. They were, like, a dollar for ten. So I thought, and free postage. So you should have let not? me know. I would have sent you a box. Oh, have you got some? Yeah. <laughs> How much they cost you? Dollar for ten? Uh, about 
a cent and a half each. Yes. Well, that little postcard was only about, um, well, I think, two bucks. I, yeah. Three posties. I've got three of them. That's so, it. Yeah, so you might as well stock up. And I did get some. Oh, I got some little glue, you know, CPU glue, because I thought, why not? It was like dollar for ten. <laughs> so why not? So, so I pretended cheap. to have that, the uh, Arctic. Yeah, because it goes hard. Does it go hard pretty fast? Because like, the last tube I had went The hard. cheaper ones do. Um, mm. You buy the good ones, like the Arctic Silver, I think it is. It's not supposed to go hard, although it still does, but yeah. it takes a couple of years. Yeah. Um, whereas, yeah, the cheaper ones, as soon as they heat up, they go hard. Mm. All right, so we're getting to the end of the show. Unless you, have you got any more stories, Will? Are you, yeah, uh, quickly, the, uh, the Nexus 7, which is Google's new toy basically um it's the seven inch tab obviously yep. it's just been released it's 199 dollars that's us so it's probably only like four thousand dollars australian um <laughs> but <laughs> uh <clears throat> it looks really neat basically it's a seven inch 1280 by 800 display um it's got scratch resistant basically uh gorilla glass on the screen um, supposedly lasts using it pretty heavily. You should get a full day, you know, eight to nine hours use out of it. Obviously, comes with uh, Jelly Bean Android 4.1. Um, it's got a quad core Tegra 3 processor, so it's going to be pretty, pretty sweet. Pretty good, yeah. um, comes with either eight or 16 gig internal memory. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, all the usual, you know, GPSs and Wi-Fi and everything like that. So. That'll be a pretty sweet little hmm. little uh, yeah. thing, especially you know, especially if it if it turns out to be fairly cheap. I think it'll be great. Yeah, yeah. Look, I had a look at one of those. That one of those was there last night. And uh, look, I don't know. I just I like the bigger format. To be honest, I like the size of the iPad or just the ten inch, big, just the bigger format. But that's just me, I suppose. Yeah, there's also a thing. Uh, I guess just it's what you get used to. I guess I've got Sonia hooked on the um, the seven inch now because she reads ebooks. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's perfect size fat. Also, I noticed uh, Audi next week. I think it is or next sale is having. Uh, they actually have a seven inch uh, e reader right. for I think it's fifty nine dollars with a leather case. Oh yeah, that's not too bad. So if you just want to read ebooks, um, yeah. it'll probably. Perfect for that. Yeah, I think I think there's a place for ebooks. Um, I don't know if you could sit what looking at an LCD screen for so long. Oh, Sonia manages. She yeah. sits there for hours and reads the thing. She'll go through an entire battery charge. Yeah, right. Wow. In one one sitting. Yeah, well, I think because um, um, Kim's got a Kobo, and she was telling me that uh, for some reason it doesn't turn itself right off when it's on charge. It puts itself in some screen saving mode, but it's yeah. it's a static screen. Mm. And some of the she, you can see some of the pages have, have actually burnt into the screen. Like it's really weird. no, it won't be because it's LCD, or is that the, uh, the e ink e ink stuff? Yeah, it's just it's it's like um, it's like the old calculators. Yeah, where you know one of the crystals aren't quite resetting properly, and it'll always right. be on. Oh yeah, it's the same sort of thing. It's it's no big deal. You yeah. know what? So drop it, you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it'll be fine. Give it a thing. Um, one thing. I was going to say now that you know, you, I'm just quickly looking on eBay as as I speak, and you can buy cheap Chinese seven inch tablets for you know forty, fifty bucks. Um, if you want a working one, you got to spend about a hundred. No, no, but I'm thinking <laughs> just for I wouldn't buy, wouldn't suggest one if you want to play Angry Birds or something. But if you just want one to use as an e-reader, um, I think one of the fifty dollar tablets would be fine. I, I if you're just going to do it as an e-reader, there's probably no point spending, hmm. you know, spending a lot of money uh, I think on I'd a tablet. It. It's just going to be wasted. Yeah, I think, look, I've looked at this Kobo and it's a lot easier on your eyes. I think if you're going to be sitting there for a long time, you they can are. read them in the sun. It's just like I guess, well, paper. that's the biggest thing. Yeah, mm. they you just can like read paper. them in the sun. But I guess it comes down to what you get used to as well. I think these days because we're so, you know, a cup even – Four or five years ago, I would say the e-inks were much better on the eyes because we're much used, more used to reading newspapers and books. Whereas these days, I mean, you, virtually everything you do is on a screen now. So I think our eyes have adapted to the point where they're almost used to seeing a backlit screen. Yeah, um, yeah, probably. 
Well because, done. I don't know, I mean, I find it weird. I can use my tablet, my phone, come home, sit in front of the LCD screen, all the players, but no worries. But as soon as I actually, I'm at work and I'm handwriting invoices, mm. I'm like, I have trouble <laughs> <laughs> focusing on this bit of paper. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> what's that about? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So. All right. Well, I think that's going to just about wrap us up. Uh, so we've got. I've put together a little uh, little piece of some of the. I don't know. Would you call it highlights <laughs> over the six years? But just before I do, we got an email uh, uh, last week from uh, a listener that I think has been listening since. Oh, geez. I think it's been early on, since about episode one. And we were talking about the the uh, Wikipedia entry. And that Miko, he was the one who actually did give it a shot and did get it taken down. Uh, his email, uh, G'day, Glenn. Congrats on the big 300. That is the, that's on the horizon. A tremendous effort. Outstanding dedication. The show has changed a lot. Indeed it has. Indeed it has. Uh, I tried three Aussie Tech Head wiki pages. Yep, back in the early days, they can every one of them. And a couple of swear words, which I won't say. Anyway, they have run out of money, money so karma there. Uh, good stuff, Miko. Yeah, once again, well done. Thanks. Um, yeah, good on you, Miko. So uh, maybe if you get five minutes, try and do another wiki page. I think they're, uh, they're getting desperate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, so thanks, Will, for joining us on the Big 300. Uh, thanks to everyone that's listened throughout the, the six years and everything like that. Maybe we'll do another six years. We'll see what happens. But uh, <laughs> next week we'll, <laughs> we'll start from 301. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a long time when you sit down and actually think about it. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a long time. I mean, time. You, you work it out. You average it out minimum three hours a show. Um you know, for 300 shows, that's 900 hours minimum, mm. you know, per, you know, and that if you've got two or three people. So you're looking, you know, well over 2,000 man hours. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so when you think about it, that's, you know, quite a devotion. It is, but it's good. It's good fun and uh, it's, it's, it's come from an audio only podcast into video and you know everything going on so that's been good it's been good and uh thanks to everyone that's listened and, and made it happen and thanks to everyone that's ever appeared on the show and let's let's try and do another six years so we'll tune up the uh the oscillator or whatever you, whatever you, <laughs> oh can you do it on the yep, on the sky give me a sec i'm working on it <laughs> i'm slightly at a disadvantage but it's okay hopefully it should be working all right in a minute so oh, it's going to go in a sec, so I'll keep talking until it starts. But uh, yeah, so um, look, I've gone through the, the episodes. Look, I know there's a lot more, a lot more that I could have put in, and uh, there's a, and there's probably a lot that should have been left out, <laughs> but there's a lot more I could have put in. But hopefully I've got a bit of a, a, bit of a grab of, of some things that you might find interesting. So we'll cue the oscillator in a second. <laughs> is, is, it, is it not working? It should be working. No. It's, it's supposed to be working. Damn you, Skype. All right. Well, we'll just have to... Um, it tells me it's working. The picture that it tells me that I'm sending to you is working. <laughs> no, it's just, a, it's just a nothing picture. Well, that's a bit bloody useless. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm just going to... I'm just going to... I'm just going to put a picture of the car up then. There we go. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week for episode uh, 301. Welcome to Aussie Tech Heads, podcasting live from the Secret Hub Studios. Great audio back in those days. Sit back, relax, and listen for a while. Who knows? You might learn something. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Aussie Tech Heads. Howdy. And that's Tech Heads with a T-E-C-H. Uh, we are the guys, is Glenn and myself, Mark. Say hello, Glenn. Hello, everybody. And uh, Mark, hello, everyone. We're from Retro Reviews. You may have heard us already. We're the uh, first of the two of the group of people that will be involved in these uh, these podcasts. Yes, that's correct. We'll be bringing on more guests as time progresses. Yes, yes. Um, of different age brackets. Uh, Glenn and I are pretty much born the same year, so we're, uh, I don't know, what would that make us? Old. Oh, oh yeah. Cross it over to you live. <laughs> Jeff. Mass Jeff is Rose, a strong point. The uh, Apple Mac Club. Yes. Good on you, Jeff. 
Hello listeners, it's Geoffrey here coming to you live from the Gold Coast Macintosh Users Group meeting. We're at All Saints Anglican College here on the sunny Gold Coast. That's one the of the Vice best places to be in Australia at the moment. Now I'm just going to hand you over to the club president, Steve, who's going to give you a quick run through on what's on the agenda for the meeting today. Thanks, Jeffrey. Well, tonight we're going to be looking at uh, the new iPod Shuffle, a tiny little device that holds over 240 songs and has quite stunning uh, audio quality and is so tiny that you can just about stick it onto any garment, T-shirts and business suit, whatever you like. So a fantastic little thing that we'll have a good close look at. We're also going to be looking at iPhoto. Uh, we're going to have some quick tips um, so that we can make the most of this very handy piece of software that comes built in um, to all the Macs that um, presently are released. And and um, that should be just the thing for those Christmas pics. We're also going to be looking at ways of posting those pictures that we've, uh, we're collecting presently. So we're looking at some of the online options that are available to us, including Flickr, Photo Bucket, Dot Mac, and um, a few other places where we can store our digital images. We're also going to be looking at uh, favourite utilities for 2006. Oh, yeah. Dear Mark and Glenn, old Sep here. I'm a little bit upset by one of the <laughs> comments that was made after my old fella slipped out of my pyjamas. And I have to admit, my wife and I, Glynis, a lover, we decided to get away from it because the barrage of insults that came through the forum really kind of got me a little bit upset. So Glynis and I decided to go to London. And bugger me, we're in London and I'm thinking my old fella's not going to get a mention and I'm going to be fine because when I was in Australia people were saying my old sausage was sticking out and my old fella was sticking out. So no sooner I'd been in London, some little bugger came up and threw a sausage at me. Oh, hey, how are you? Oh, pretty good, mate, pretty good. How's uh, yourself? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. And of course, also, Excellent. also in, the, in the internets, on the Skypes, is Reg. Hey, how are you, Reg? Not bad. Hi, everybody. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, Pipe Networks. They, this is about that uh, Sydney to Guam cable. Yes. Right. It's finally been connected. They're <laughs> testing it right now. Um, now yeah, because now... Uh, it's in the testing phase. Mm. Bevan Slattery said today mm. in a statement, we now have staff in Sydney, Guam, Papua New Guinea, Tokyo, San Jose... Establishing PIP points of presence and preparing testing of the greater network. Oh, man. Hey, welcome. I just tell you what, time comes around fast, doesn't it? The weeks just roll around. It's episode 163, Aussie Tech Head. And with us tonight, we're going to get straight into it. Wayne, how you going, Wayne? G'day, Glenn. G'day, everyone. How are we going today? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Hi, Lounge. We've got a, we've got a couple there in the Lounge. And also, we've got a Google Wave going again this week. If anyone's got the... Uh, Signed up to Google Wave. Uh, what was, what, what's that? The, Google what? I've Twittered, so you need to get into Twitter <laughs> and get the uh, link and join us in the Wave as well. And you can uh, practice your waving skills and all that sort of fun stuff. All right. Ah, so it's been a busy week. Busy week, a lot of heat. Oh, hey, welcome to Aussie Tech Heads, episode 79. I'm your host, Sap. Unfortunately, no other bugger could make it because they're all getting absolutely off their nut. They've had big cheese burgers and they're going off to the pub. So they've left me to do the whole bloody show. I'm just letting everybody know that Glynis and I got back together again. And I think the best thing about it is being that my name's McGuinness, as in my surname. We worked out after a couple of shardies that it's Glynis McGuinness. So we're thinking of doing a cartoon character or something in honour of her. And also the fact that we got back together again. Love you, Glynny. Anyway, oh, hang on a second. What's that? Oh, bugger me. They've come back again. Oh, they're probably pissed off their nut. Oh, all right, come on in, you buggers. You I'm going off there. Give me some fucking up. Cheers. I think we've been stuck in a time war. <laughs> what has Sep done to the intro? My mm. goodness, my goodness. And welcome, everyone, to episode 79. This week, very special guest live in the Secret Hub studios, Aussie Tech Head headquarters, we have Chris. Hello, Chris. Hey, how's it going, Glenn? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Uh, what happened to the intro? Sep, Sep's done something to it. I don't know. I think Sep must have 
been on some bit of drugs, maybe. He must have been doing something. But it's, good mean, to, it's good to hear he's got back with Glennis. Yeah. But also, uh, Mark. Mark's also joining us tonight. Yes, I think that was actually from Frank. Yeah, I think what's happened is uh, Frank uh, has sent us in an intro and Sepp's got hold of it. And we said, Sepp, don't play it. It's got Daleks in it. <laughs> don't play it. <laughs> <laughs> and on top of that, it's actually the intro for the War and Everything Chaser mixed it's, in with Aussie Tech Ed. It's, it's a, a bit trippy. And, and talking about getting mixed in and mixed up shows, we've also got Ben on the line. And, howdy, howdy, how? and everyone had known Ben from Tech Wide Australia. And, uh, you? Yes, and so, uh, so everyone's here tonight. <laughs> and what's the other one he's from? That's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, just, I, I, I well, guessed, uh, I suppose, but yes. Well, I, I'm nice. from, for, well, Ma, both uh, Glenn and I are from the Mac Zone, so I think that's might be what but you're thinking of. Yeah. This is this podcast central. Oh, yeah. It's true. Yeah, Why it would you true. pay? You know, if people are downloading the latest songs for free on LimeWire and downloading Torrents and downloading bloody Wolverine before it comes out at the movies, yeah. why the hell are they going to pay for newspapers? Torrent- now, apart from the fact that 90% of them can't even fucking read. Fina- financial uh, review. Oh, no. Yes. Yeah. But the, 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 the Australians, one thing is, the, the, one thing is the big news, the big news. Oh, is, like, yeah. What time is it? It's uh, 56 minutes now. I don't think that's correct. Big news is... Yep. Glenn's looking for a new co-anchor because Mark, this is his final show. This Yo, is Mark's final show of Aussie Tech Head. After 137 episodes, I've had a fantastic time, but this is my final show. So, so, so what, what, there's anyone out there that wants to jump in? Oh, yeah. Hello and welcome everyone to episode 230 of Aussie Tech Head and yes it's St. Pat's Day and if I could do an Irish voice accent I would do one for you but uh, episode 230, that's about the best I've got to be sure, to be sure, that's the best I have. Oh look I invite anyone, if you can do better to please come on and give it a shot. But anyway, yes, welcome. It is Aussie Tech Heads, and we'll just get rid of this music. Oh, yeah. One minute to auto-destruct. Hello, Aussie Tech Head. Anthony from Logan, formerly from Wellington. Remembering passwords is getting harder and harder. I use Password Safe to store most of my details, but now with so many websites requiring a login, remembering all my passwords is next to impossible. And while Password Safe works really well, as soon as I go to another computer, I don't have access to it. I was using the same password f- recently, and it got me into some major strife. I'll talk about that on another episode. So, to fix the problem, check out LastPass at lastpass.com. It works in both IE and Firefox and su- is supported on Windows, Mac and Linux. Oh, yeah. I'm here with Deb. Say hello, Deb. Hello. What did you just buy? A toothbrush with two sticks. Okay, and what song does it play when you're brushing your teeth? We will. We- okay, Frozzy Techhead, two- second year anniversary. I'm here with Deb. Say hello, Deb. Hello. What did you just buy? A toothbrush with two sticks. Okay, and what song does it play when you're brushing your teeth? We will. We- okay, Frozzy Techhead, two second year anniversary. I'm here with Deb. Say hello, Deb. Um, hello. What did you just buy? A toothbrush with two sticks. Okay, and what song does it play when you're brushing your teeth? We will. We- okay, Frozzy Techhead, two second year anniversary. That's a I'm loop here with of Deb. Say hello, Deb. Hello. What did you just uh, buy? A toothbrush with two sticks. Okay, and what song does it play when you're brushing your teeth? We will win. Second, second year. I hate this shit. That's you do it to me every time. <laughs> How often do I do it? We hardly ever do it. It's not the point. <laughs> Happy birthday, Aussie Tech Head. Oh, okay. Keep on doing what you do. Yay! Yay! <laughs> All right, so there you have it. Uh, that's something I'll just put, put together this <laughs> afternoon. I hope you liked it. <laughs> All right, so until next week, uh, just, and a special mention to everyone in the lounge as well, Brad Chalkstar. Oh, Eric's in the lounge, Frosty, Milo, PA, and every, I hope I, I've got everyone there, That is, all the regulars that are there. Thanks very much because you're always dedicated every Thursday night, and it's good to see, good to see. So we'll see you next week. Thanks, and bye for now. Bye.